Go. Hey guys, this is Top 50. Today we'll be reacting to Mr. Nightmare. Free disturbing true Craigslist horror stories. This is in volume 5. But I want to react to this one. It says free candy. I'm glad I clicked that. I've seen that. Because i just seen a few seconds. And I knew this is good. Because there's this guy named Gator Martin. I love his channel. He reacts to... I don't have pajamas, but... Fuck off. Um... A lot of these videos, and I thought they were pretty good. So, Craigslist. I already know the introduction, and she's already fucking up. But let's keep, let's just watch. Start. Craigs, oh, I'm gonna pause this. Craigslist is a great place to find good deals on base, but it can be very dangerous. You know what person you are communicating with? No shit. <laughs> and with these stories, we'll exemplify. As these stories will exemplify. Number three. I'm a 22-year-old girl. I was looking on Craigslist to buy a couch for my new apartment. You fucking up. You fucking up. To the max. You know why? Who buys used furniture? I'm about to have a, a schizophrenia attack, man. I said that wrong. I mean, holy fuck. What? It, who knows what that couch has on it? Could have AIDS. Not that AIDS spreads that way. It just could. And a bunch of other fucking diseases and all shit. Who wants to use a couch someone else fucked on? I don't. I'd say fuck no. Get a brand new thousand dollar couch from he Heaven. Have Heavener. Yeah, Heavener is pretty good. Ago, I found something I thought seemed like a good deal. From the pictures, the couch seemed to be in great shape. Okay. The seller wanted to be con. The car there leads me to believe that. Too far. Dress to my house. I suggested that I just come to him. But seemed like a good deal. From the pictures, the couch seemed to be in great shape. The seller wanted to be contacted by email. His email was Mexican Poppy six six six. You fucking up. You don't email someone with that kind of email. They'll give you spam email. You're gonna open it and they'll fucking invade your whole computer. This bitch is fucking up to the max. We need some mental therapy for this girl, okay? You're 22, I know, but you do not meal someone who's a me who says Mexican something. At hotmail.com, I felt that email was a bit off-putting, but I still went ahead and emailed the man my offer. He responded within five minutes, accepting the offer and asking for my address. You are fucking up to the max. He's asking for your address. He does not need to know that. You need to know his address to get the fucking couch. Then you take the couch and get it back to your fucking house. You don't need to give him your address. Stop fucking up. Why would you need to give him his your address when that's the first thing he wants to ask you? You know something's fucked up. You know. You're just saying. I honestly felt uncomfortable with his asking. I did not want a stranger coming to my house. I suggested that I just come to his house to pick it up, but he continually insisted that he come to my house. Eventually, I stopped responding, and a day later, he emailed me again, giving me his address. I didn't know if I should go at that point, but it seemed like a steal. Almost. You're going for a shitty piece of furniture. You're going to risk your damn life. You goddamn dumbass. You don't go to some random... Here's the thing people mistake. When you go to a foreign address, you go on Google Maps or Google Street View or Earth, you look the address. When you see where the road goes, you know if it's safe or not. If it's in the hood, mm, it's risk, but it's okay. If you see it going out 50 miles into the forest, you know you're fucking up. If you're going out into the desert and some shit... Too good to be true. And according to his address, he didn't live too far. So I got in my van and drove over to the seller's house. I immediately noticed that the house was a bit smaller than all the other houses on the block. When I rang the bell, a middle-aged man wearing a baseball cap answered the door. He gave me a huge smile and invited me in. I was immediately feeling uneasy. Exactly. You're stepping in a middle-aged man's house. You fucking up. 
He led me into his living room, and I saw the couch. Immediately, I saw scuff marks and small tears in the couch. It was not at all in the shape that it appeared in the ad. I commented on this, and he just smiled and offered to lower the price. I told him I'm not interested, and here's where things started getting creepy. As I was making my... That's what happens when you're refused. It gets weird. It happens to me too. Let's say, for example, they'll treat you like shit. You don't want to buy their shit, they're just going to treat you like that. Way out of the house, he put his hand on my shoulder and offered to give it to me for free if I was willing to, quote unquote, suck his dick. <laughs> nah, that's too harsh. Bro. Give something to him. <laughs> what? 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 Give what to him? Give some head to him? I let out a disgusted gasp and got back into my car. I didn't even look up out the window. I just drove away from there quickly. But it doesn't end there. That same night, I was laying in my bed watching TV when I thought I heard somebody stomping up the steps of my porch. You are walking. You're fucking up to the max. <laughs> yeah, you're fucking up to the max, man. You are fucking up to the max. You got this bitch coming up your stairs? Or... Wait, your porch? That's in the back. Wait, wait. Let me rerun this back. Just 10 seconds. But it doesn't end there. That same night, I was laying in my bed watching TV when I thought I heard somebody stomping up the steps of my porch. Okay, porch. I muted that the be... TV and was able to clearly hear the sound of somebody fiddling with my front doorknob. You better got a quick set lock, bitch. You better have a quick set. Or a master lock. All else you're fucking up. All else you're fucking up. You need something that withstands the industry. And I probably, what you got, since you're poor as hell, you ain't getting, probably just gonna go, boom. Yeah, I got a strong hand, you gonna go, ah, and then just break your door. No. I jumped out of my bed and tiptoed over to the front door to look through the peephole, but whoever it was was already gone. And then, I thought I could hear the sound of the gate to the backyard opening and closing. I think your house would be unhaunted. See, this is what happens. When you don't take someone's offer, they're gonna haunt you. It happened to me before. It haunted me in the end. It wasn't pretty. That was when I grabbed the phone and dialed 911. Soon after, I heard the sound of somebody fiddling with the doorknob to the back door of the apartment. I yelled to whoever it was at the... Your apartment has a back door? Wait, those are the poor apartments. When I mean poor, it's just the low grade, like the $500, the, the ones that are in the hood. I can't really show you, but they actually are like a like a little townhouse, kind of. Or a duplex. I thought they were duplexes or some shit, but then I seen them, they're, just, they're actually apartments. I was like, what the hell? Looks like you living in the hood. Police were on their way, and after that, I heard the sound of the gate opening and closing again. They were gone. This was a month ago, and nothing has happened since. But I still can't sleep at night. Yeah. I'm 99% sure it was the man that was selling the couch. He must have followed me home. There was no way it was just a coincidence. I don't plan on using Craigslist anymore. And I'm still trying to find a new apartment. Okay. Number two. I was looking for a car to buy for my son for his 18th birthday. You buying him this piece of shit Toyota? You buying him that? You buying him a 2000 free Camry? Give him a goddamn 2018. Be a nice dad. Pay the 30,000 for a nice old L XLE. Don't give him this shit. I mean, even get the, a few year old car. That's what I got used. No, I don't have a car. Dumbass, I'm not even old enough. Runs and drives. Great reliable car. No cannibal, no check engine light. Minor body damage in rear. Clean title. Only 67. It looks, I mean, you, to, I mean, if he was buying it himself, that's not bad. Well, but for you to give your son something like that, that's just embarrassing. 
you should go to the grave and just go. Okay? That's embarrassing. Why are you embarrassing yourself with such a shitty car? But it looks like it has new tires, though. That looks so sweet. I was searching all the typical car websites. Cars.com, eBay Motors. They were all overpriced as expected. Craigslist was the only place to find an actual deal. I'm fucking up by buying a car on Craigslist. Who knows what's wrong with it? It could shut down in the middle of your goddamn way you drive back. Who knows? You don't know what you're getting. And if you get a pre-owned car, you're getting you're a little better. You're a little better. Not the best, but a little better. About a week into my search, I found an 03 Toyota Camry. It had 67,000 miles, oh, no accidents, no damage, and good condition for only 3,500. This seems like a steal for such a reliable car with such low mileage. It is really The seller lived that. about 10 miles. How is that a steal? Oh, this was made in 2015, so it'd be a 12-year-old car. I don't feel bad because... Nah. Miles for me, which was a reasonable drive when looking for a car. I gave him a call to set up a time to come check it out. The man sounded normal on the phone. He assured me that there were absolutely no problems with the car. He introduced himself as Bob. It was a Bob. I brought along 3500 in cash, even though I planned on wiggling down the price as much as possible. You know what's another mistake? You carry that much cash. That is a fuck you you give him your credit card. Then again, he can steal your information with your credit card. So don't do that as well. Give him a check. Checks roll. You can't steal it, nor it's nothing not nothing of value if they take it from you. So it's a win-win. I pulled up the dirt road to Bob's property about 15 minutes early. It was a tiny little house with a decent-sized property, only because it was a bit far from the nearest neighbors. The garage was open, so I walked over to see if anybody was inside. But except for an unusual amount of car parts, it was empty. The car was nowhere in sight. The only car on the property was an old pickup truck. I went over to the front door to check the house numbers. It was the right address. The doorbell button was missing, so I knocked on the front door. I knocked for exactly five minutes before deciding to give the man a call. So I dialed his number, and I heard the sound of a cell phone ringing from inside the house. Oh. I was extremely confused at this point. Oh. Now I knew I had the right house. I didn't understand why, if he was home, why he wasn't answering. Maybe he's taking a shit. I decided I had to... He, he might have been taking a shit. Just... It happened to me once. I, someone knocked on my door while I was taking a shit. I'm serious, it happened. Did a guy give a fuck? No. They kept knocking. They're just some scandal. Or some scammer. I just let them go the fuck away. Take a peek through one of the windows to see if anybody was inside. Peering through the glass, I couldn't really see much as it was pretty dark inside the house. I saw a very old-fashioned dining room set. But across from that, I saw somebody standing at the back door of the house, staring outside. I figured that must have been Bob. So I knocked on the window, but he didn't even move. Maybe there was no gate or anything to the backyard. It was just a wide open yard since this wasn't a rural area. I simply walked around the house to the backyard. I didn't understand how he couldn't hear me. When I got to the back door, I made a shocking realization. The figure standing by the door was a taxidermied human being. Ooh. I ran straight back the way I came. I, I should be I should be shocked, but I don't know what taxidermy mean. I'm a retard. Some things I don't know. So let me look up what taxidermy mean. Sorry, I might be a real big idiot. Definition. The art of preparing stuffing a mountainous skins of animal with lifelike effect. Damn. Pleased? Okay, well, it's an animal. Okay. I heard of that before. That one, but I didn't know it was the... But <coughs> I didn't know what taxidermy. 
So it's a human. That's like cannibalism to me. You eat animals, but you don't eat humans. Just like, that's why I think you stuff animals, but you don't stuff humans. So, like, that's, that's okay. Came in back to my car. I looked up one last time before driving off. The blinds to the window I had peeked into had been shut, but I could see two of the blinds bent open. Somebody oh. was at that window watching me. You can probably guess I had the gas pedal to the floor the whole way home. The whole situation still makes no sense. All the car parts, the fact that there was no Toyota Camry, the taxidermied human being, the fact that there was no car there leads me to believe that whoever that man was wasn't planning on selling me anything. And that also leads to the disturbing thought that I was very close to becoming a lifeless statue staring out that... That's what I was about to say. This is creepy. This guy knows what I'm thinking. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. One, one step closer to the edge. <laughs> if you if you got one step closer, that guy would have raped you, slit your throat, cut your head off, and stuffed it with pork. Man's back door. Because Number one. I was looking to buy the iPhone 5 about a year ago. I found a guy on Craigslist who was selling his for $200. He claimed it was in mint condition and that he wanted to upgrade to the 5C. Okay, that is kind of an upgrade in hardware, but the plastic. But this is 2015, there's a fucking iPhone 6. iPhone 5 is 2012. Uh, iPhone 6, I mean, I, I, iPhone uh, 5C and 5S are 2013. iPhone 6 is 14. I mean, this guy is old, and hopefully, if everything goes well, by October, I should have an iPhone 8, the newest iPhone, minus the 10. I don't give a fuck about the 10. <laughs> it's not worth another 500 bucks, or 300, I mean. It's not worth it. It's, plus, it doesn't have the home button. It's, I missed the convenience of that, so I just take, I'll just take the 8, and silver. Silver? I mean, gray. And then this guy's trying to get a used phone. Some people are mentally ill. I didn't know much about how to go about testing a phone to make sure everything works. So I brought my little brother along who knew a lot more than I did. We met halfway at a Dunkin' Donuts parking lot at like 10 o'clock at night. Two large intimidating guys stepped out of a black Honda Civic and walked over to us. One of the guys pulled out the phone and showed it to me. It didn't have a scratch on it. My brother took out my SIM card and popped it into this new phone. He did some testing and told me that it works. The guy then asked for 250 even though he originally asked for 200 I lied and told him I only brought 200 and he seemed a bit unhappy with this. I did have 250 but I didn't want to spend more than his original asking price. I kind of figured it was his way of making sure I didn't haggle down the price. I handed the guy the 200 and he and his buddy got back in their car. We got back into my car, and I tested out the new phone. Whoa, 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 whoa. You could be the next victim of a drive-by shooting. Don't do it. Don't, don't fall for this. By calling my girlfriend. I sat testing things around for about five minutes. My brother commented on the fact that the two guys hadn't left yet either, but I didn't really care. I started the car and pulled out of the parking lot. My brother then commented that the two guys started their car just as I had. I didn't find it too weird. I drove down the turnpike and eventually stopped at a red light. That's when I noticed the black Honda Civic pull up right behind us in my rear view mirror. I found the You know what to do when this happens. You know what to do. You know what to do with the big fat ass. Wiggle, wiggle. No, 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 not that shit. No, you, you speed down. Pretty much what you gotta do is you just gotta cut corners and speed down alleys until, you know... There's no way he would have found you. A bit weird since I was sure they came from the opposite direction. I continued my drive home, but every single turn we made, they followed and close on my tail too. Oh. My brother suggested I pull over, but there was no way I was going to do that. Oh. I knew those guys were looking for trouble. It got to the point where I was trying to lose them and started driving dangerously. Yep. If they needed something, they would call or at least honk their horn, but they were looking for some kind of trouble. I tried something risky to lose them. At an intersection, the light had just turned red. 
I floored it across the intersection before any of the cars would begin to pass. My brother shouted at me, calling me stupid and crazy, but it worked. They didn't follow. We got home after the extra long drive. My heart was still racing from the intensity of the situation. I was just happy I got a working phone for such a low cost. Later that night, I was playing around with the phone, trying to set some things up before going to bed. My parents and brother were already asleep at this point. And just then, the sound of two car doors slamming shut outside interrupted me. I looked out my window, and I felt like my heart completely stopped. Boy. The black Honda Civic was parked across... What kind of Honda Civic was that? Was that a 1990s? Because you know what to do. <gasps> no, not that. Across the street. I could only assume the two guys were already halfway to our front door. I immediately woke up my dad and explained everything as quickly as possible. He got up grabbed a baseball bat and crouched behind the front door. A loud knock came at the front door. You know, what the fuck is a baseball bat gonna do? Gonna do shit to those guys. You need, you need to join the NRA and get some rifles. That would do something, at least. My dad screamed at them to go away. One of the guys on the other side of the door claimed to have a gun and said that he would shoot the lock off of the door if he didn't open up. Oh, shit. My dad told me to call Joe. Our friend who lives two doors down who happens to be a police officer. I called Joe and he said he would be right over and to stay hidden. Here's the part that still scares Whoa, me. Did to you say Joe is a police? Just like from Family Guy. That's from Family Guy. That's cool. Day. There was the sound of a silenced shot of a pistol. I peeked over and saw a bullet hole in the door. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, let's bring it back. Let's bring it back. This guy has a gun, and you had a baseball bat. Who's gonna win? The guy with the bullet launcher, or the guy with the fucking ball hitter? The bullet launcher. Let's shoot your goddamn frontal lobe off. No good to your other lobes. Man, I'm a dumbass. I don't know what kind of goddamn lobe. I forgot all the types of lobes. Cerebral? I forgot. Inches away from my dad's head. My dad ran away from the door, and we all listened. We heard Joe outside yelling at them to drop their weapons. My dad went outside to help when they lowered their guns. Joe arrested the two assholes. I have to say, this was the scariest day of my life, but it was also the best I had ever felt in my entire life. Okay. Well, my conclusions. That was a cool goddamn video. But those are some fucked up stories, man. I'm not saying they're true. They they could be. Then these are possible scenarios, you know. It's possible these could happen, but all three of these people were fucking up to the max. To the max. On a scale of one to ten, they were fucking up at eleven. That's not even physically possible. Who wants a fucking couch used? Who wants a 2000... Who wants a Camry that looks like it came from 19th century? Or 20. I don't know. Which, which you would prefer. And who wants a goddamn iPhone 5? In, in 2015. When you should get an iPhone 6. Um, I gotta do something right now. Well, you are all fucking idiots. We know your situation. But you don't try to be cheap. Because if you're cheap, you will die in the end. You will die in the end. Okay. See, I beat. I use Craigslist. I know. No, I mean, I sold stuff on Craigslist. I don't use it. And I got some good deals. But these people, they didn't act strange at all. They just. Wanted to buy the shit. They bought my... And it was in Michigan. They bought... I was doing like a little yard... Yard? It was a sale. I sold my like patio uh, table and chairs like 150 I sold my mower. It was an errand. Uh, 50 A snowblower, 50 Uh Battery-powered Ryobi tr trimmer, 
like 20 or something. I forgot, my goddamn. Some snow shovels. Uh, I f we're trying to do a fish tank. Uh, some other things, I forgot. Those are the, those are the important to me. Something else. I tried to sell him a goddamn easel. If you don't know what an easel is, it's like an art board. Like a little board, but... It's, it's, it's called an easel, but... Some kind of like... Like board. And those people did not act strange at all. I got like over 200 bucks. I mean, at least my dad does. I didn't get shit. Or was it 400? It was, I think it was 400. Or 300 or some shit. Sold our stuff so we can take stuff. Because then we moved into the apartment. And we moved into a house. So that's how it worked. I mean, had nice times at that apartment. But, you know... I mean, I'd, I wouldn't, there's some things I'd consider on Craigslist, maybe some used trimmers or some sh lawn equipment, but maybe some other stuff, but I don't want my house to be made from junk. I want every, most, I'd say about 95% of everything in my house, if not 98, is made, is, uh, is all brand new. All, all, except for one of my cars, those a 2012 Camry that was used, but we got we got a. It was kind of the price was close to being new. It was a LE. Man, that thing had a nice color. I think I just gave out a lot of information. I shouldn't have said that. Some 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 creep ass bitch is gonna use that, and then they're gonna find my house, and then they're gonna kill me, and then they're gonna take all my goddamn shit, and then they're gonna eat my brain. It's scary. Don't, don't, don't. Another tip, guys. Don't give out your information to people who are foreign to you. And I like to use foreign because you know, if, like, if you're foreign, you're from a different place. So if you were to be foreign, someone, you don't know them. You never heard of them. So it's like from a different place. So just don't do it. They might use the information in a bad way. They might use it to try and kill you, steal your stuff, cause harm to you. I mean, it happens. Shit. Yeah. So, that's my tips. If you follow those, you should be relatively safe. I mean, there's still pirates, you know. And if you if you go if you're if you're traveling near Somalia, which I wouldn't find myself doing, I mean traveling like near, in the ocean. Is Kenya near Somalia? I think yeah, it is. It's clo It's near it, but I don't think it touches it. If that makes sense. Let me look up a goddamn. Let me put on Google for you. Because Somalia is known for having pirates. And who wants you while you're sailing to be killed by pirates? That seems like a thing of the past, but is it? So, I, I can rant down all day. I'm going to look this up really quick. Because one day I do plan on going to Kenya. Just be cool to see it, how people are doing there. Sounds like a weird idea, but why not? I mean, you got Nairobi. Is that how you pronounce their capital? It looked pretty co cool. I thought I downloaded. Oh, I got that uh, Siri. Google Earth. Here's what I found. Open Google Earth. I gotta go really soon. But let me check. Ow. Uh, yeah. Ethiopia, small Uganda, and South Sudan. They all border it. Somalia is a pretty big border. A lot of border. And Tanzania. Okay. Yeah, but they got pirates, so be careful. Yeah, be careful, guys. See ya.